Greetings and good morning from here in New Jersey. How's it and good afternoon to all my friends in South Africa and anyone around the world tuning in. Welcome to this presentation of Infinite Dial 2022 South Africa. My name is Larry Rosen. I'm president of Edison Research. We're so excited to present this uh, study results to you guys today. Um, as many of you will recall, I was down there in South Africa in 2019 presenting the results in person. I'm sorry I can't be down there this time, but hopefully as things open up, I will have a chance to get down there and be with all of you very, very soon. Uh, but in the interim, let's walk through what we have today. Before we do that, I want to emphasize that if you have questions during this presentation, feel free to use the Q&A box in the bottom of your Zoom screen. Type in the questions. I have colleagues standing by to answer any questions that you have or any answers that we have uh, that we can give to you. Um, we will be posting this full presentation on edisonresearch.com at the end of the presentation. So if you want to get a copy of the deck, it will be available to all of you. Importantly, I want to thank the sponsors of this presentation. First, the NAB of South Africa, the National Association of Broadcasters, the BRC, the Broadcast Research Council of South Africa, and Triton Digital, uh, the company that provides lots of data and information to broadcasters and other players in the audio space. We can't thank them enough for their support and sponsorship of this study. And with all of that, let's launch in and take a look at Infinite Dial 2022 South Africa. Let's start with explaining how we did the study. Late in 2021, in November and December, we conducted telephone and face-to-face -face interviews with 1,500 people in South Africa, ages 15 and older. But it's not the total population of the country. As we did last time, uh, our sample population is what we're calling the major metro commercial population of South Africa, which consists of those in the upper two of three SEM supergroups in the eight metropolitan municipalities that you can see on the screen there. Then we, as is appropriate, weight the data to reflect the gender, age, and race of this population. I do wanna mention that even though the data is comparable to what we did in 2019, we've expanded the geography. So on the screen right now are the metro areas that we surveyed in 2019. The uh, all the metro areas within Gauteng, as well as Durban and Cape Town. We expanded this year to include Nelson Mandela Bay, Buffalo City, and Bloemfontein. Uh, so a more complete set of the major metropolitan areas of South Africa. I also wanna mention, as you can see on the screen here, that the major metro commercial population represents uh, a sector of the total population of South Africa. In particular, it's a, a population that is different because it's only in those large cities. And it is only, as you can see in the middle here, representing supergroups M and H and not representing the uh, supergroup L or the um, least well-to-do part of the population. So what you can see is that does change a bit the reflection of the total population of South Africa, but it is an attempt to sort of look at the parts of South Africa that are most similar to the populations in the other large Western economies that were doing the infinite dial in the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, and elsewhere. So uh, again, bear in mind that we're reflecting what we're calling the major metro commercial population age 15 and older of South Africa when we look at this data. So let's start by looking at some basic metrics with regard to media and technology. And first we asked about, do you own a smartphone? And this number is up a little bit, but it's getting about as high as it can get. 90% uh, of people ages 15 and older in the major metro commercial population of South Africa saying now that they own a smartphone. And we start with this number because so much of what we're measuring with regard to digital audio consumption and other things is really controlled by the smartphone. And having the smartphone is sort of the entry point into all of these things. So for this population, nine in 10 now have a smartphone. 
One of the things uh, we're going to be doing is comparing the results in South Africa to the ongoing results we get in the United States and as well in other, um, in other countries where we're doing the infinite dial. So here we're showing the 15 plus population from the United States compared to the 15 plus major metro commercial population of South Africa. And you see the results are extremely similar. In fact, in that part of South Africa, ownership of a smartphone is actually a couple points higher, 90%. But bear in mind, again, we're comparing the major metro commercial population of South Africa to the total population of the United States. Here's the other way we're going to look at a lot of the data, and that is how South Africa's major metro commercial population compares to the three other countries uh, that are somewhat similar. And you see that uh, South Africa is right in the midst with all of these other countries that we're looking at. You will note at the bottom, and I won't mention this on every slide, but it is important to note that we have the same exact 15 and older in the USA and Australia. UK is actually 16 and older, Canada is 18 and older. So slightly different groupings, not really significant, but it's important to note that they're slightly different uh, age, defini age definitions in the UK and Canada. But you see that the part of South Africa that we're looking at here is extremely similar to the total populations of these other four countries. We also asked about tablets. Do you own a tablet? And the number has grown dramatically over the two and a half years since we did the 2019 study. So from 11% up to 21%. Um, and then one of the really hot topics in the world of audio smart speaker. And here we see somewhat spectacular growth between the two studies. It was relatively new and hard to get in 2019. So 12% of people in the major metro commercial population of South Africa saying they had a smart speaker two and a half years ago. That number is now up to 32%. Which kind of smart speaker do they say they own? And bearing in mind, there can be some duplication here. 21% say they have a Google smart speaker, 14% the JBL link, and then small percentages for the Amazon Alexa and the Apple HomePod. How does that compare? Well, you see it's just behind our estimate from la early last year in the United States. The United States, our estimate is at 34%, and here we get 32% within this population of South Africa. So the smart speaker is clearly increasingly a factor in uh, at least being owned and as a gateway to digital audio consumption in South Africa. And you see that number in South Africa among this part of the population higher than our estimates for Australia, Canada, and UK, and only behind our estimate in the United States. One big difference between what we see in South Africa and what we see in the United States is if you do have a smart speaker, how many smart speakers do you have? So while the number of people who have at least one, as we saw, has caught up almost to the United States number, the average number in people's homes seems to be much lower. So if you have one in South Africa, you're most likely to only have one. Whereas in the United States, if you have one, you're actually more likely to have more than one than to have only one. So you see on the right there, the average number of devices in the United States is nearly one more per household. In the United States, people have filled up more of their houses uh, with smart speakers once they've sort of taken the plunge. So this will be an interesting thing to track over time. Do South Africans follow the same pattern that we've seen in the United States, which is people get one and then they go on to get a second one or a third one or more, as you can see on this graph. So now let's take a minute and turn to some metrics about AM FM broadcast radio. We start with kind of an amazing finding, which is we ask everyone in our population whether or not they've listened to any radio in the week before we contacted them. And you see, we got basically the exact same result, in fact, a point higher. So in 2019, 68% of the major metro commercial population said they had, and it's up one point to 69%. Uh, at the end of 2021. So despite all the growth in digital audio consumption that I will be showing you in this presentation, it's really fed in as compatible and sort of expanding the world of audio 
we don't show evidence here that's taking from at least the reach of broadcast radio uh, in terms of the last week. That 69% in South Africa uh, is similar to what we see in some of the other countries, well above our USA estimate at only 59% of people remembering or saying that they've listened to radio uh, in the week before they were, comment before they were contacted. Uh, almost exactly the same as Canada, a little bit below Australia and the UK, uh, which are around 80% of people saying that they've listened to radio in the last week. One big difference that we see in South Africa as compared to what we see in the United States is ownership of a radio in the household. As you can see in the top bar here, we ask people in this study, how many radios do you have in your home? And you can see only 6% of South Africans say they don't have a radio. Virtually everyone said one to three radios, 90% and only a little 4% said they have four or more radios in their house. Compare that to the last time we asked this question in the United States at the beginning of 2020. Fully a third of Americans say they don't have a single radio in their home. Uh, and that's a huge difference from what we see in South Africa. So again, the beginning of listening to broadcast radio starts with having a radio or listening to the stream. And you see that's possible for the overwhelming majority of people in South Africa at home, uh, far, far higher than the number we see in the United States. However, as I said, digital audio consumption uh, is happening in big numbers. So we asked in both studies in 2019 and now in this new study, while you're at home, have you ever listened to radio content on your phone on a computer or through your TV. And there was an already robust 44% saying yes in the 2019 study. And look at the growth in 2021, fully up to 64% or nearly two thirds of people saying that they had listened to radio at home, not just through a radio, traditional radio, but through a digital device. So what you see here again, is that the ability to listen digitally is part of what's likely supporting the numbers we saw for total radio listening. People are listening on radios and people are listening on other devices from which they can access the same kind of content. We also asked about ever having downloaded an app from a AM FM radio station. And we see the same kind of big growth over the last couple of years, 10% in 2019, growing all the way to 36% in this current study. So three and a half times the number uh, in this short period of time. At this point, we should probably pause to consider some of these big changes and think about what happened in the interim. Well, one thing that happened in the interim, of course, is COVID-19. And a lot of people spending more time at home, being uh, forced to find new ways to access information, entertainment, and other sorts of services while they're at home. And while we can't prove that the disruptions of COVID-19 caused these kinds of gains. It certainly seems logical that part of what caused this dynamic growth across many things that we're gonna look at in the survey was likely the changes wrought by the COVID-19 pandemic. With that, let's look, and we're gonna see some of those kinds of growth at the total world of online audio. So similar to what we saw a second ago, we ask a lot of questions in the survey about different ways that someone could listen to online audio uh, in one way or the other. This is the rollup of all of those. And here we see that really significant growth over the last two and a half years from 39% in 2019 to 61% of South Africans in their major metropolitan, major metro commercial population uh, now accessing audio online in some fashion. As you can see here, that number is now what we estimated back in 2017 in the United States, whereas previously it was all the way back at the 2012 level. So you see it sort of zipped forward uh, about five years gain in two and a half years time. And you can see this is very much increasingly a mainstream behavior in South Africa and approaching the kind of level we see in the United States. 
Interestingly, our estimate for the United States is actually a little bit behind what we see in the other three countries we're comparing to here, Australia, Canada, and the UK. But you see South Africa is rapidly catching up uh, to these other countries when we look at this part of the population. That was monthly, now let's look at weekly. Same story, rapid increase in the numbers, now up to 52% saying they've done any kind of online audio consumption in the last week. Interestingly, again, landing directly on our USA estimate from 2017 at 52%, and you can see how that came forward from 2013. So four years gain in um, two and a half years time. And again, trailing all four of the other countries, but catching up rapidly in terms of South Africans engaging in this behavior. We also asked this vastly increased number of people who say they've engaged in any online audio consumption, how much time they've spent listening to online audio. And this is really significant. The average went up a little bit from six hours and eight minutes to six hours and 20 minutes. This is again, self-reported sort of the average number of hours and minutes that people told us. But bear in mind what I just showed, the number of people who said that they had engaged in any online audio consumption increased dramatically over the course of the last several years. So not only are there way more people engaging in online audio consumption, they're consuming a lot more. So you put those two things together and you see almost an explosive increase in online audio consumption over the last several years. So now let's take a second and look at online audio brands. We asked about all the ones that you can see on the list here. And this is simple awareness. Are you familiar with, have you ever heard of, and you can see far and away the best known is YouTube music. 69% of everyone in our population said they've heard of YouTube music, well out ahead of number two Spotify, which is 36% awareness. And then on down the list, as we look at a variety of other options in this rapidly growing market. So YouTube seemingly pushing it uh, the hardest, uh, but you see many of these big international players like Amazon, Apple, TuneIn, Deezer, Tidal as well, SoundCloud. What about having used it all? Have you uh, listened to it all in the last month? Again, basically the same story. YouTube music, far and away the leader, 45% of everyone in South Africa saying they've used YouTube for music or YouTube music in the last month. Spotify in a clear second place at 18%. You do see the radio app jump up to 9%, um, narrowly beating out things like SoundCloud and TuneIn um, now that we're in sort of the uh, single digit percentage of people using these things. And then finally, in the last week, very much the same story, YouTube music, the dominant leader with Spotify in second place and then down the rest of the list. We then went on to ask what to use the most and we see here again that the big player is YouTube Music. Two out of every three people uh, who use any audio brand saying that they use YouTube Music the most, Spotify in second place way back with only 12%. Uh, we do see that um, for the older people, they're more likely to use the radio app. If you look down at the bottom at 55 plus, uh, the radio app getting a, a bigger percentage, Spotify a smaller percentage, 55 plus, uh, but does relatively better, 15 uh, to 54. But overwhelmingly, as of today, YouTube Music is the uh, dominant brand for online audio. Let's take a quick look at look at in-car media and what people in South Africa are using in their cars. Here's all the audio sources that people say they currently ever use in their car. This is among the three quarters of our population that say they've used a car in the last month. AM, FM radio, by far the most used, the 80%, a little more than half have consumed in some fashion their own music collection. Some people are surprised to see a number like 44% of people continuing to use their CD player. Uh, but almost all cars still have CD players and people, if they have them, they want to use them. 28% say that they have listened to online audio in their car, They're connecting their phone in one fashion or another to the car and listening that way. And 27% of people who've been in cars say they've listened to podcasts where you have a whole podcast section coming up. 
This is the first little appearance by podcast. 27% of people in cars say they've listened to podcasts. We can compare those numbers to the numbers we see in the United States. And in general, the South African numbers and the American numbers are pretty similar. Uh, radio does a bit better in South Africa than it does in the United States. Um, higher numbers really across the top three, but lower for online audio and podcasts. So the sort of pure online functionality is a little bit more developed in the United States than we see in South Africa, at least as of today. Have you ever connected your phone in the car to uh, listen uh, in any fashion? We asked that in 2019, 15% of people said yes. Two and a half years later, the number is more than doubled to 34%. So continuing that theme, we see throughout this data set, vastly more use of online audio in all its forms uh, in this year's study as compared to a few years ago. And then finally, we have a big section here about podcasting, the hot, hot sector of the world of audio, and often the area that creates the most interest from Infinite Dial and all the studies we do around the world. So first we just asked, have you heard the term podcasting? Are you familiar with podcasting? And here you see an overwhelming jump. Only 22% of South Africans knew the term as of 2019. That number leaps all the way to 48% of South Africans now knowing the term in this most recent study. However, that number still lags way behind what we see in the United States. You see the United States was at this level back in 2014 or 2015. It has sustained a significant rise in awareness since then. And it'll be interesting to see how rapidly South Africa is able to catch up to the American numbers. Uh, it made a long leap forward in the last two and a half years. And, and I think it's poised to continue to rise. But as of now, it's well behind awareness levels in the United States and well behind the awareness levels in all the countries we're comparing it to. Uh, the next lowest is the UK at 71%. Australia has always shown this huge level of awareness of the concept of podcasting at 92%. So um, tremendous growth for awareness of podcasting in South Africa, but tons of growth still available. And you can see how far behind it is the numbers we see in these other countries. Have you ever listened to a podcast? Strong, significant growth here as well, from 19% in 2019, now up to 36% in 2021. And that one checks in back, if you drift your eyes back to the 2016 level in the United States. So again, a rapid catch up, but still way behind our current estimates for podcast listening in the United States. And as you can see, well behind the very consistent findings we have in the other four countries, which range only from 57% to 60%, they're all basically the same in terms of ever listening to a podcast. Now 36% in South Africa, and it'll be interesting to hopefully track it in subsequent infinite dials and see if and when it can catch up. Have you listened to a podcast in the last month from 10% up to 26%? Again, tremendous growth. Now back to the 2018 level on, on listening in the last month. So getting a little closer to our American estimate. And while lagging the other th three countries as well, not lagging in quite as significant a number. So, you know, what we see here in South Africa is if you're familiar with podcasting at all, there's pretty good adoption of the medium. Uh, just the issue is that uh, it starts from a much, much lower base. Who is listening to podcasts in South Africa? On the left, you see the total major metro commercial population. And on the right, you see those who said they've listened to a podcast in the last month. So what you don't see a huge difference in terms of men versus women. You see that monthly podcast users are a little bit more male, 53% male, as compared to 48% for the total population. You also see that it's a little bit younger, uh, the adopters of uh, podcasts, monthly podcasts in South Africa as compared to the total population. 44% of the total population 
in these metros is 15 to 34. That goes up to 51% of monthly podcast consumers. And that's very consistent with what we see around the world. It's typically younger people who adopt these more tech-friendly solutions uh, the earliest, but they also tend to stick with them. So um, it's not a surprise to see that it's younger, but it's, it's obviously a very um, good profile, uh, certainly if you're selling ads against podcast consumers, et cetera. Finally, have we, you listened to a podcast in the last week? Again, big growth from only 6% two and a half years ago, now up to 20% of uh, our population. That checks back again to the 20, between 2018 and 2019 level uh, in the United States. And as you can see here, it's actually relatively close. It's uh, only a small percentage behind the estimates we get say in Canada at 23% uh, or the UK at 25%. At 20%, South Africa has a somewhat competitive kind of number. Um, if you are listening to podcasts, how many podcasts are you listening to? Uh, so if you've listened to any in the last week, how many did you listen to? You can see on the right, the average is around four. But I like to look at this graph and look at how many, you know, there's that little group 5% saying 11 or more. And you may be one or you know someone. There's people who when they get into podcasts, as we like to say, they sort of fall down the podcast rabbit hole and they get really into it. So you can see over 20% of people said six or more, 5% said 11 or more. So similar to what we see in other countries, once people get into podcasts, they often get very into podcasts and listen to quite a lot. Where are people listening to podcasts? Overwhelmingly at home. Three quarters of people say the main place they listen to podcasts is at home, 13% at work, 4% in a vehicle, car, or truck, and 7% in other places. This doubtlessly is uh, a reflection that would look probably similar no matter what. But after the last couple of years that we've had with people often being at home more than they were previously, this is probably push all these sort of factors are probably pushing together, increasing awareness of podcasts, increasing usage of podcasts, all the COVID disruptions leading to a lot of at home podcast listening. And then we asked how often you, if you've listened in the last month, how often do you listen? A quarter of people say every day. So very habitual podcast listeners. Um, and more than half saying at least once a week. Um, and then, you know, percentages saying, you know, that they do it several times a month, but not weekly as we saw that difference between weekly and monthly. But you do see there's clearly quite a lot of habitual podcast consumption going on in, in South Africa, looking very similar to what we see in the United States and other Western economies. And it will be really interesting to continue to track this data as we go forward. Lastly, we asked about what are the services you use most to listen to podcasts. And um, we again see that dominance of YouTube, 36% saying they use YouTube the most, sort of traveling around the circle, 14% Player FM, 13% Facebook, um, which is really trying to uh, concentrate more on the space, 12% Spotify, and then Google Podcasts, sort of Google showing up again with 7%. If you put that percentage together with YouTube, which is also a Google company, you see Google is really the main factor in podcasts in South Africa. You know, one point I thought I might make is that as I know there is a growing amount of bespoke South African podcasting content being created there. And that is one of the key things we've seen that leads to growth in podcasting in any geography is having content in your accent, in your languages, speaking to your people directly, as opposed to world podcasting, if you will, which has a lot of appeal, but it really cannot develop the podcasting economy in the same way. Uh, unless South Africans are making bespoke content for South Africans. And that's what we're increasingly seeing. And I do think that's likely another big factor in all the growth we saw in podcasting today. And so there you have it. Uh, thank you for staying tuned through all of this presentation of the Infinite Dial South Africa 2022. 
Uh, if you have any questions, we'll continue to man the Q&A box for a few more minutes. Feel free to type the questions in there and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Uh, if you're looking for this deck, it is now live on our website at edisonresearch.com. You can find it right on the homepage, a link to download it from. And obviously, if you're watching on tape, it's uh, there, still there as well. And I want to, again, thank our sponsors who brought the Infinite Dial South Africa to you all, the NAB of South Africa, the BRC, and Triton Digital. And with that, I will say good day, and I hope to see you in South Africa very soon.